I think I need to finish this project right here and I'll tell you exactly what it is. This is what you call a vacuum former. If you don't know what that is, then I'll tell you. Basically, what you do is you put a mold on this table, or, well, it can be a mold you made, or it can be something that you bought that you like to make a plastic copy of. This table here will have a vacuum on it, you know, when it comes time. But you put your mold on here, and I'm building a heater box right there to heat this plastic. And there's the frame to put the plastic in. Put the plastic in the frame, put it up against the heaters, and when it gets good and hot, it'll be sagging quite a bit. Well, then you come over here and you mash that plastic down on this table, hit the button, vacuum forms, and it sucks it all down around your form, and there you have it. That's what a vacuum former is. I haven't worked on this thing in about two years. Matter of fact, uh, last time I worked on it was the night before Daddy passed away, and I just haven't felt like fooling with it since. But I'm out here trying to clean this dirty garage up. There's a fire dragon, by the way, and it's about to run me out of here. It's a so hot. Anyway, uh, I was out here cleaning this garage up, and I said, this either needs to be done or tore down and gotten out of here. So I've decided to finish it, and let me show you what all I've got done so far. This, this table here, has got a bunch of little holes drilled all the way through. I think it's a two by four table and it's just built out of two by fours. And on the inside of it, I've got it jam packed full of all the two by fours I could get in it. So there's not as much air volume in here. So the vacuum can you know suck just a little volume of air out and then start actually having a vacuum. Here is the heater box. I got one heating element done. I gotta put another one in, and then this will go over top of this table. Then the frame here that holds the plastic, I would like to put it on a rail sticking up here where I can just lift it up, latch it right under the heater box, and then when it starts sagging enough, unlatch it and just drop it straight down on the table. That's what I'm gonna try to do. Under here is all the control stuff, and I'll walk you through that here for too long when we get ready to hook all that up. So what I want to do first is get this up on here and uh, get that other element run, and then get it wired up, and then get it attached above the table here. So let me get started with that. All right, let me show you exactly what I've done here. I have drilled holes. I don't know how far apart they look like they're probably six inches, five inches. And it's gonna it's just gonna do this, like this one here, spiral around. And I just got done measuring it and it's got to be 16 and a half feet. And the reason I need to know that is because this is the element right there. And it's gotta be stretched out like this here. So I've got to mark 16 and a half feet on this floor, get it stretched out, and then I'll be right back. All right, this is how you do it right here. All you do is put this heat element where you want it, and then spread your cotter pin out just a little bit. Slide it over the heat element and through that hole. And then once you get through the hole, you can just spread your cotter pin out, and there you have it. By the way, this is party backer board, uh, cement board, you know, for tile. I got that idea from somebody on YouTube a few years ago.
All right, heating element number two is installed. What I'm gonna do is, I already got my hole drilled, put a loop on the end of the heating element on either end, and then put a bolt through it, and put a nut on the backside, and then I can put my electrical connection on the bolt, and then put another nut on it, tighten it up. Just like, I've already got these on, just like this here. Let me show you underneath. It's just a bolt, is all it is. I had to break out the meter and measure the ohms because I forgot what wattage these heaters are. This one here is a 3500 watt. It's 16.4 uh, ohms at 240 volts. This side over here would be 3750 watts. It was 15.3 ohms at 240 volts. Just in case you want to know. I don't remember exactly how I was going to wire this up, but all these parts were here with it, and I'm assuming I bought them two years ago. And looking at it, there's kernel strip. I'm assuming I was going to bring power into it and then come off it. But this is the cable I'm using. This is a uh, an extension cord from a welder. And those wires are way too big for this little terminal strip. So I think what I'm going to do is push this box right here in the middle. Run this big wire into it pigtail off of it over to this box that will be here and it'll have these two switches in this box pigtail off of here to the switch come off the switch to this post and then it'll go through it'll come out this post and pigtail back to the other side of this in this box might not be the best but that's how i'm going to do it so let me get started on that and these switches are rated for 277 volts, 20 amps. So they should be plenty. These are going to pull about oh, 14, 15 amps. So those switches should be plenty. Here's a tip if you ever wiring anything up, if you're screwing it into a terminal or if you're wiring it together, whatever, just give it a little pull, make sure it's in there tight, especially on wire nuts, because sometimes you'll think all those wires are tight, but they're not. So just give each wire a pull, and if it's tight, then you're good. Well, I got it all wired up. It's plugged into the wall. Let's flip a switch and see what happens. It ain't got no booms and sparks, so that's good. I see smoke coming off of it, so that means it's heating up. Oh yeah, she's getting red. Yeah, that's gonna work great. Yep, that's pretty warm there. Let's turn the other one on. All right, here comes the other one. It's doing a little sparking, burning stuff off of it. I tell you what, that's putting some heat out. I'm, I'm six foot away from it. It's pretty warm. It's good to know that that works. So now let's get it mounted above the table. All right, this is my nephew, Blake. He's gonna help me put this top on here because it's pretty heavy. Let's 
see the lines where you got to line it up? Yeah. I'm glad to get that done. That was a little bit too heavy for just one man. Also, I put bracing on the ends and the back because this thing was getting wobblier than a drunk coming out of the bar on a Saturday night. It's pretty sturdy now. Uh, well, let's hit the switch and see what happens. I broke this too, by the way. I have to get another one. She's doing a little buzzing on me. Oh, she's turning red now. Let's hit the other one. All right, they're both on now. And I'm telling you, that's a whole lot of heat right there. I don't believe we'll have any trouble uh, getting that plastic to heat up and sag. Uh, so now, what I gotta do next is get this frame mounted up here somewhere, like I said, on some kind of a rail right here on the side. Then I'll have a latch on the outside somewhere here. I'll just pull it up there, latch it, let it heat. And then when I get ready, unlatch it and drop it down on the table. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that. I've got a couple of ideas. I'm gonna ponder on them tonight and figure out which way I'm gonna do it. All right, this is how I'm gonna do the frame on the rails on the sides right here. I originally thought about getting some uh, linear bearings and rails to put here. This thing ain't worth that. Uh, it ain't worth the money to buy them. So I'm gonna go with my original plan and that is this. This is the frame right here, as you can see. And this right here is three quarter inch EMT conduit. What I'm gonna do is bore a hole all the way through here and then up here bore a hole, I don't know, an inch or two deep. And I will slide the conduit in from the bottom, bring it up here, put it in this hole here. And then I'll have a little plate down here to hold that conduit up in there. Then, on the frame, I believe this is one inch uh, PVC conduit, and it slides right over that three quarter, and slides really good. So what I'll do is fasten this to the frame, maybe with these clamps, I don't know, and see if that'll work. I, I believe it slides pretty good, but if it don't, then I'll uh, I'll change it up and uh, figure out what will work. Here's a, here's a funny story. Anything that I build, I have a general idea of how I want it to work, but I normally don't have specifics worked out, and it used to aggravate Daddy so bad. I'd start something, and he said, well, what are you going to do about this? I don't know. I'll worry about that when I get there. Well, what are you going to do about that? I don't know. I'll worry about it when I get there. <laughs> it used to make him so mad when I'd do that because he would have a specific plan worked out on anything he built, and I just... You know, I fly through it, engineer it on the go, I guess is what you'd call it. But anyway, let me get started on these rails, and uh, we, it won't be too much longer before we try this thing out. I got to uh, get my controls back in order, and then I believe we'll be ready to try it out. I had to do a little finagling with my hole here so it wasn't true. I mean, it's wood, you know, it ain't, it ain't gonna be that accurate. 
But I think I've got it pretty good now. You don't take no effort to slide it up and it'll pretty much slide down on its own. I believe it'll be pretty good. But these don't want to stay in these little clamps. So what I might do is drill a little hole in them, put a real short screw, and hopefully that'll keep them in them clamps and they won't fall out. Now I need to get the frame up here where it's going to be when I'm heating the plastic and figure out some kind of a latching system either to here or this piece or something. Something that's easy to unlatch when it comes time to drop this thing down. So let me think on that just a minute. All right, this is how I decided to do the hangers for the frame. This was in the metal scrap pile. I don't know what they are, but see, you don't throw stuff away. You can always use it again. Anyway, found them in the scrap pile. I welded them to the hinge, screwed the hinge to the frame, and just drilled me a hole up here in the top and raise it up, hook it in the hole, heat it up. When it's done, unhook it, drop it down. Pretty simple. Let me give a demonstration of it. I put a little oil on these uh, pieces of pipe too and it helped out quite a bit. All you do is you raise it up, you hook it in the hole, you let it hang, you turn the switches on, it's hot, turn them off, grab them, drop it down, stop on the pedal. There you go. Here's a shot of all the controls. It's very simple. There's a switch that turns it on. It's hooked to an extension cord. That's the vacuum pump. If you've seen the Kubota tractor video, you've seen that vacuum pump. It pulls the vacuum on this tank. That's an air tank I got from Harbor Freight, five or six gallon tank. I got a vacuum gauge that lets me know when I got a vacuum pulled. That's a solenoid valve that's attached to this foot pedal. And then you got this hose here that runs up to the bottom of the table. By the way, this table is sealed on the inside with caulk. All you do, once you've got your plastic brought down over your form, you step on the pedal, it opens that solenoid valve, and the vacuum in this tank pulls the vacuum through that fitting right there. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to hit the switch and we'll pull a vacuum and just show you how it all works. That's about all the vacuum it'll do. So I got a piece of plastic, it's the film that came off of the plastic. So I'm gonna step on the pedal and see if it'll suck it down. Oh yeah. Yeah, it sucked it down real good. My concern was that, see how small this, this is? I don't know, it looks like it's probably half inch ID hose. I thought it might be too small, you know, to pull a real quick vacuum. It looked like it's gonna do pretty good. If it don't, then I can change it out, go to one inch, three quarter, whatever, make it bigger. But we're gonna try it just like it is. This is how you load the plastic in the frame. I got hinges over there on that side, and then I got to, bolts with wing nuts all around the perimeter all you do is open it up put your plastic in close it up push them bolts up well that won't come but anyway you push bolts up put the wing nuts on there it is so let me get this on a tripod and I, I believe we're about ready to try it out I told y'all earlier that this was a two foot by four foot table not quite it is 21 and three quarter by 45 and three quarter pretty much. Uh, I left an inch or so gap all the way around for my frame to come down around it. Now my frame is an inch wider than this table and it holds on to about a half an inch of plastic on either side. Also this top of this is MDF board because you want a smooth surface if you use plywood, you know, it's pretty rough and it won't seal up with the vacuum. So you want to use something like MDF to, to really get a good seal.
I already got my molds up here. You might be wondering what that is. Well, this door trim. You might be wondering, well, why you got door trim up here? Well, this is why I decided to make one of these things a couple years ago. I got cats. I like cats. If you don't like cats, we can't be friends. Anyway, cats like to scratch a lot. Cats like to scratch door facing, door trim. You can't train a cat not to do something. It's about like trying to educate a five-year-old on, I don't know, investing in the stock market. It just, it ain't gonna happen. So I got to looking online just to see if there's anything protective you could put over door trim where they'll scratch it and not the wood. There's nothing. The only thing I found was there's some stuff you can put on your couch, you pin it on it some kind of way, and a piece of plexiglass or something that you hang off of a doorknob to keep a dog from scratching. That was it. And people, you know, they'd try a double-sided tape on the door trim, spraying it with stuff. I, nah, I ain't doing all that. I said, there's got to be some kind of way that I can form plastic around door trim and tack it up there and they'll scratch it instead of the wood. So this is where I discovered vacuum forming. So that's why I have these door trim pieces up here and we're we're fixing to give her a try all i gotta do is flip a switch and then we'll come on and heat this plastic up now that plastic it's it's supposed to droop way on down here this is the first time i've done this so we're learning together and i don't really like this gap in between my frame and the top but i don't i don't think it's going to matter if it does then no I'll, I'll work around it so let me get this set up on the tripod and we're fixing to give her a try. All right, here we go. We're gonna give her a try. Turn it on the first one. All right, let's turn on the second one. All right, they're both on. Now we wait for it to sag. It's already sagging a little bit. Been about five minutes and we're down to here now. I think this gap here is hurting me. So on the next try, I'm gonna have to cut these little pieces of PVC down so, so I can close this gap up and we'll see what that does. It's down to about right there now. I don't think it's gonna get much better than that. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, here we go. Well, that didn't go as planned at all. Got a great big old wrinkle in the middle here as soon as I sat it down. And it didn't, it didn't hardly form at all. I don't know what to do unless it needs to be hotter, drooping more. Uh, let, me, let me cut these off so I can get it up here closer and we'll give it another try. All right, I closed the gap up by cutting this piece of PVC off. Makes it a little more aggravating to slide it up and down, but I'll manage. And also discovered, I thought this turned all of my controls on and off. No, it just turns the vacuum pump on. Step on the pedal, and it still works. Now, let me tell you all this before we go any further. This is a very dangerous apparatus because of heat, wood, fire. Uh... There's a difference between being dumb and stupid. Dumb, you just don't know. It's the same thing as ignorant. Stupid, you know, but you don't care. You do it anyway. I'm stupid. I do stupid stuff. Don't do what I do. Please. Now that that's out of the way, I've got that same piece of plastic in there. I just want to see if it'll, if it'll melt it, sag it again. So I'm going to fire it up here in just a second, and let's see what happens. Heater one is on. Heater two is on. And now we wait. That helped out tremendously. It ain't been but a couple of minutes and it's already sagging a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my molds on here. Just see what it does. I know this is all crinkled up. I know it won't be right. I just wanna see what it does. Practice on this old piece basically is what I'm going to do. So let me get my molds on here, get the camera set up and we'll, we'll give it a try here in just a minute. 
Yeah, that's really helped out a lot. It's been less than five minutes and it's really sagging now. I'm gonna give it a little longer and see how much further to sag and then we'll give it a shot. It's sagging probably eight or 10 inches now. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, here we go. Well, it did better, but it still ain't right. Uh, it didn't hardly form anything. And these wrinkles, I don't know what you do about that. All right, I've decided not to use as many pieces on my table and just see what that does. And I'm gonna use the same piece of plastic again. Last time, once it started sagging, it got most of the wrinkles out. This plastic is not cheap, by the way. So I'm gonna keep using this piece over and over until it either breaks or I figure it out. So let me turn it on and uh, I'll be back when it's sagging. She's sagging pretty good again. And it didn't take me about five minutes to get there. So let me set the camera up again and we'll try it one more time. All right, here we go. I don't have enough vacuum. That's what it is. Now that time it acted like I didn't have enough vacuum. This stuff was still really soft, but it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't getting sucked down. So I may get rid of that vacuum pump and tank and hook up my shop back to it and see what it'll do. All right, this is what I did. I just drilled a hole in the side of the table there, stuck my vacuum hose in it, and let's turn it on and see what it does. That's not bad. Uh, it probably won't pull as much of a vacuum, but it'll be a constant vacuum. I reckon it's time to give it another try. Let me turn it on and I'll be right back. She's sagging pretty good again. So let me get the camera set up and we'll try it one more time. I took the plastic off molds. It's getting better. You can't tell, but it needs to form better down in this corner here. And it wouldn't hurt if it sucked down in these grooves a lot more, but that's not as important as this corner right here. I want that to be pretty sharp. I guess I'm gonna have to get on the interwebs and do a little more research. I don't know if I'm getting it too hot. It's sagging too much. That may be what's causing these wrinkles. But you know, it was no better than it's forming. It seemed like it would need to be hotter. I don't know. I'll, maybe my plastic is too thick. I want to do a little more research and we'll try something else. All right, I just got done watching two or three videos on the old YouTubes. And the very first one that popped up was uh, Adam Savage from uh, uh, Mythbusters using his vacuum former. And I noticed his mold was sitting up off the table a little bit. So I have cut some pieces of wood and put under my molds. That should give me that good sharp corner I'm looking for. I watched another video and I noticed the mold had little small holes in it and I figured I would probably have to do that. So I went ahead and drilled holes in these molds here to hopefully get it to form down in these grooves. The third thing and the most important thing I think, I'm getting that plastic way too hot. No taller than this is, I shouldn't have that plastic sagging like it is. No, if it was this tall, then yeah, I would need it to sag quite a bit. But for this, I don't I don't think it needs to be sagging that much. And that'll take care of the wrinkle problem. So, let me get a piece of plastic in this, get it up here and get it heated, and we'll try it one more time. Well, here goes attempt number, I don't know, three, four. Here we go. You probably can't see it, but it's it's sort of deformed right now. I think once that smooths out, I'm gonna give it a try and see what happens. All right, here we go, let's try it. That is mucho better. 
it still ain't done in the grooves like I want and it still can be better on this right here I think I could have heated it more because there's no wrinkles at all so this next piece I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it droop a little bit more and let's see what happens all right let's give it one more try maybe it'll work this time all right let's give it a try Well, it, it formed pretty good there. It went down in here a little deeper, but I got wrinkles. Here's why. I let it sag too much because this stupid camera right here, the battery ran down. And I was over here trying to get it plugged in and turned on and it got too hot. So <laughs> I'm gonna take a 60 thousandths piece, put it in here and let's see what it'll do. So what does this make? Like number six try? I don't know. At least this stupid camera's plugged in now. So let's give it one more try. It's sagging, I don't know, three or four inches. You gotta remember this is thicker plastic too. And it doesn't feel as flimsy as 40,000. So I don't know if I need to let it go more or not. I think we need to try it. That was really good, except I got a couple of wrinkles here. I got one over there. Uh, I don't like this thicker plastic at all. I, I can tell you right now, it's it's harder to work with for sure. So from now on, if I buy some, I will be using the 40 thousandths or maybe even a little thinner. I got one more piece of 60 thousandths and I'm gonna give it one more try. Maybe we can get one good set with no wrinkles and formed good so let me put that piece of plastic in here we'll give it one more try well this is the last try fingers crossed that this one will be perfect here we go it's sagging i don't know about three inches so it's dropping pretty fast so let's go ahead and try it It ain't perfect. I could still use it. I'm going to use the other ones too. Uh, I just don't like this thick plastic. I believe if I had some more 40 thousandths that we could, uh, we could get it to work. So this is Monday night. I was hoping to get this video uploaded by Friday night. If I can get some new plastic here, say by Thursday, then I'll go ahead and order some and we'll give it a try and that'll be in the video if you're hearing this then i decided to do that if you're not hearing this well then i didn't so let me see if i can get some order to get it here by thursday and we'll give it one more try with i may get some thinner plastic so let's just see what happens i just got done ordering three more pieces of plastic this is twenty thousandths. it's a lot thinner so if i'm not careful i'll i'll really get this too hot should be here thursday and this stuff has gotten a lot cheaper, I believe. I don't remember it being this cheap two years ago. Anyway, while I'm waiting on this, I think I'm going to start the next video. I think y'all are going to enjoy it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, my plastic come in. I got two sheets over there. One in the thing already. This stuff is really thin, too. So I'm really going to have to watch the heat on it. But uh, anyway, let's, let's try it. See what happens. All right, she's sagging about three inches. It feels pretty flimsy. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Well, it's about like the others. It's just not forming real good. I did notice where it pulled out of the frame over here. 
this is a hinge side and I've only got with one bolt in the middle so I, I need to put a couple more like on this side because it didn't pull out of the frame on this side but I don't know what the issue is unless that's just not enough vacuum for a table this size I'm tempted to go back to this and try it one more time now that I know not to heat it up so much so if I can find something to stop this hole up with right here then I'm gonna give that vacuum pump one more try all right here's the attempt number I don't know 294 something like that I don't lost count I did not block this hole off and here's why I got to thinking use them both let that do the initial sucking and then stomp on the pedal and let that really give it a good vacuum I don't think it's going to hurt anything and I believe it's going to help I don't know why I hadn't already thought about that you know not having enough vacuum for this size table I'm kind of slow it takes me a while to figure stuff out but I normally get it figured out also I put a couple more bolts in the frame over there because I want to reuse this plastic you know if this doesn't work I reused that last piece and I didn't put it on video because there's just no need in you know being redundant and that brings me to this point I'm fixing to make y'all might be wondering why does he keep showing all these mistakes well one I'm not perfect I don't want anybody to think I am that's not what this channel is about two if somebody comes along and watches this video hoping to learn something about vacuum forming well they're going to learn exactly what not to do that's for sure so anyway let's let's give it another try hopefully this time it'll work keep your fingers crossed all right let's give it a try better it's it's formed deeper down here it's down in these grooves deeper and I believe we have figured out what these well one of the issues anyway we've we've learned quite a bit let's just walk through what we have learned number one you need to have your mold up off the table if you need a good sharp edge two if you got some type of depression in your mold well then you need to drill holes in it number three if you get the plastic too hot and it sags too much, well, then you're going to have wrinkles. Number four, and probably the most important thing, you got to have enough vacuum for your size table. And those two bolts helped because it didn't pull out. Well, I've done a little modification. Let me show you. I got two tanks now. I got double the vacuum volume. That yellow one is 11 gallon. The blue one is 10 gallon. So I, I believe we're gonna get a really good pull this time. So let's try it. We got us a pretty good vacuum pulled. We got a little bit of sag to it. I say we give it a try. All right, here we go. Well, honestly, it's about like the last time. Uh, it's not going all the way down in the groove. This ain't going all the way down to the table. But I'm satisfied with it. I can use them. The only one I can't use is this one right here. It's just a mangled mess. The rest of them, I believe I can use, and they'll be fine for what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call this a semi-success. I'm just wondering if my table don't seal up as good as I think it does. I don't know. I might revisit this one day, you know, and try some different stuff. But for now, I'm going to call it a semi-success. I'm going to cut some of these out, and, and we'll go in the house and put them up and see what they look like. I want to show you all something. When I built this, I didn't show it, but I put a piece of plywood on top of there just to keep me or somebody else from accidentally reaching over in there and touching a bare wire and getting electrocuted. Well, that first piece of plastic that I was heating up, that plywood started smoking. I thought it was going to catch on fire. And I left a gap, about a one inch gap over here on this end to let heat escape out. Well, let me show you this. It melted my plastic junction box. Remember me talking about a difference between dumb and stupid? 
Yeah, this is stupid. Don't do this. Don't put a, use a plastic box. Put it on the outside and put the bare minimum amount of wires up here that you can. Cause it can melt the insulation and short out and cause a boom, catch on fire and all that. Just don't do this. All right, I got three of them put up. There's one there, one there. Moe's down there investigating that one. That's Gerald, by the way. He's got a messed up face. It's sort of flat. I feel sorry for him. That's why I've got him. Anyway, this is the 20,000th one and it's really flimsy. Uh, they'll probably tear that down pretty quick. This is the 60,000th one. It's pretty tough. I believe it'll be okay. And as you can see, it formed just as good as the 20,000th one. So thickness of material, it ain't the problem. This down here is the other 20,000th one. And like I said, it's pretty flimsy and they're gonna tear it down. You can see where they've been wearing this trim out here. I'm gonna kill them if they keep doing it. But anyway, I just wanted to show y'all what it looked like put up. And if you're not looking for it, you can't really see it. Well, I'm gonna end this video here. Like I said, I call it a semi-success. We did get some made. They may not be as goodly as we want them to be, but we did get some made. Uh, we did figure out you know, a lot of things not to do once we got that out of the way. I believe the main issue now is it just needs a stronger vacuum. I don't really know how to fix that right now. So I may revisit it on down the road, see if I can figure it out. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned what not to do at least. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe. That, that really helps me out. And until next time, go do something.